Can't you two just get along? I swear. These guys, Londo and Jakar, what am I going to do with them? So Babylon 5 is a series that I decided to get into. Um, I actually bought it around Black Friday. I bought the entire series on digital, which I don't normally do, but $20 for an entire five-season show was too, much, too good to pass up. So Babylon 5, for people who may not be aware of it, is one of the best shows that most people haven't heard of. I only knew about it because it was mentioned a couple times in The Big Bang Theory. Um, so the concept of the show is that Babylon 5 is a space station and it's basically like the UN for humans and aliens and various races meet here and uh, the there's a council of the of the main five that that meets every now and then and they sort of discuss stuff as far as just political stuff uh, personal stuff all sorts of things and there's all sorts of really colorful characters and stuff that goes on in the station and it's basically, it's a space drama in this, you know, big floating tin can. And upon watching The Gathering, you know, the TV movie that really started it all, I was really pulled in. I really like this first season. It's bumpy in a couple of places. Not all episodes are great. I didn't, there wasn't an episode I just outright hated. Um, I will say that I think that when thinking of other science fiction shows, you know, Star Trek Next Generation is my favorite, but has by far probably one of the worst first seasons of any show I've ever watched. And the creator, J. Michael Trzynski, is still trying to figure his stuff out. Like, he still, like, seems like a new writer at this point, and it's just, it's, it's a freshman season. However, I think that the story and the characters really pull through and for me, that is my favorite part of the show, is the characters that are on display. There are tons of human and alien characters. There's no, like, main guy. Like, it does have that in common with Star Trek, where there's not, a, like, a main character. Um, a lot of episodes can feature a different ensemble. Um, but there's a lot of human characters and a lot of alien characters that are featured in a lot of episodes. Um, so I kind of want to go and I want to break down each character... So you got Jeffrey Sinclair, who is the commander of the station. He has a sort of amnesia from the, the war that the humans were in with the Membari. And that is a big plot within the first season, is trying to figure out what memory he lost because he remembers being taken aboard one of the Membari station. And then 24 hours later, he wakes up and it turns out that the Membari have surrendered. Really strange because the Membari were winning at this point. And then you've got his second-in-command, Ivanova, and she is this Russian badass. I don't know how else to describe her. She's so funny because her sense of humor is so dry, and that's one of the many reasons I love her. Ivanova, it, it took a while for her to grow on me because I was just like, I, I didn't really pick up on her sense of humor at first, but she just ended up having some of the most funniest and badass scenes within the first season. And then you've got Garibaldi, who is the sort of chiefs of security. And you can tell that he has a really checkered past because having him on Babylon is not something that the Earth government is a fan of. In fact, Sinclair gets a lot of heat for picking, you know, his friend to be chief of security because it's, it's not clear what has happened, but apparently Garibaldi has had a lot of issues being of security in the past so this is like a last shot for him um, and then another human character that appears quite a bit is Talia Winters who is a psychic and the there's a portion of the government called the Psychor that they you know they sort of regulate psychics because you're not supposed to you know just read people's minds because that's that's, that's illegal but it's, at the same time you can hire psychics under the understanding that both party agrees that agrees to mutual reading and Talia Winters is sort of the station psychic uh, but uh, she is a very like cold and calculated character I, I'm not like gonna say evil she's not evil by any means she's just she you could tell she's very well trained like like a soldier almost and then you've got the doctor of the station Dr. Franklin and Dr. Franklin has some of the worst episodes in the first season. Like, he, a lot of the episodes that center around him aren't very good. 
it's not that I hate the character. I think the character is well acted. I just, I don't know, it just feels like they didn't have a lot of really great stories for him. Now let's go into the Alien Ambassadors. Starting with Kosh. Boy, what do I say about Kosh? Kosh is a Vorlon, and essentially these Vorlons live in these containment suits because nobody knows what they look like. We don't know if they're in the containment suits because they can't survive in a normal environment. We don't know if it's because they just don't want people to know what they look like. Kosh is really mysterious. I think he has like less than 10 lines throughout the first season. Like he doesn't say a lot. There's a lot of times where during the meetings with the big five, it he just stands in the background. Like seriously, he doesn't really say anything. Like a lot of times he won't even vote because the Vorlons, their ships are so powerful and they're so mysterious. You just get the sense that they are above all of this in some way. Um, and a lot, in a lot of ways, Kosh is my favorite character because he's so dang mysterious. And then you have Jakar, who is the leader of the Narns. And the Narns are these, there's these like lizard people that are very warlike. They're they're warriors, like they're 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 tough. And the thing about Jakar is he comes off as like sort of a bad and antagonistic guy. But I encourage you to keep watching throughout the first season because other things start to happen and you start to learn more about him and he's a really interesting character he's one of my favorites and I'll, I'll, I keep, I'll keep saying that throughout the rest of this review because it's hard to pick a favorite because there's a lot of really great characters throughout the show and opposite of Jakar is Londo the ambassador of the Centauris and the Centauris are very bigger than life like they've got these this hair that is just huge um, and you could tell that their empire used to be great, like they're very proud of their past, like they linger very a lot in the past. You'll hear Orlando talk a lot about what the empire used to be, and of course his confl their conflicts with the Narn are constantly brought up throughout the show. Um, it's, it's easily one of the most compelling parts of the show is their bickering back and forth. And you just you just want them to make peace, but it's also it's interesting to watch these two uh, old foes go at it from time to time, and also try to be part of negotiations. And then, last but not least, is Delenn. Delenn is the ambassador for the Membaris, and the Membaris are a very spiritual people. Like they're almost like monks in a lot of ways, and it's they're very they're very belief heavy. And I love that about her because she says a lot of very, very profound things. And you know, I keep debating back and forth on who my favorite character really is. And perhaps I will have a favorite character by the time I talk about season two. But Delenn is a great character because there are times where you don't know what she's up to. Um, or what she knows about Sinclair's memory loss. And it's really compelling their relationship because they've got a really strong friendship, which is strange in a lot of ways because their people used to be at war. And I think that it's really powerful to see these two races that used to be enemies to see these two characters be close friends. I think that's a really powerful message. And I think that, that it comes off as believable. Um, but she's a great character. I, I love her. Like, she is just a really interesting character. And all the characters in Bad 1 5 are typically all well written and all well, well acted. And I think one of the biggest things that I've seen criticized is Michael O'Hara's performance as Sinclair. And in a lot of ways, you could argue he is the main character of the first season because, I mean, he's the commander, he runs everything on Babylon 5. And some people have accused him of being wooden, and I, th I always thought that his performance was more restrained. Like, and that's kind of why I like that. I like that approach. Like, I like that he's restrained. Like, he's not like Captain Kirk. He's not, um, he's not like Kirk at all. Um, he would maybe, I guess if you had to compare him to a Star Trek character, it would probably be more like the early seasons of Picard. In next gen, uh, you know, Picard was a lot more reserved 
in the earlier seasons of Next Gen and then started to warm up. And Sinclair kind of goes through that sort of transition as well as he gets to know more of the crew. It's mostly just Garibaldi that he hangs out with at first. Um, but yeah, I like Michael Harris' performance as Sinclair quite a bit. I, I like that character a lot. And as far as my favorite episode for this season, and I won't, I won't say what it's about because it's a huge spoiler, but I would say that my favorite episode of this season is Babylon Squared. It's one of the last episodes of the season. Great episode. It, it was something, the events in this episode were teased earlier on in the season, and I loved seeing it come to fruition. And I didn't expect it to happen so soon, but it didn't bother me that it happened so soon because it was so well done. And my least favorite episode, I would probably have to go with either TKO or Believers. TKO is about a martial arts tournament on the station, and then Believers is about this alien race, this, these two aliens that bring their son, and their son is infected with some sort of disease that only a major surgery can fix. And their parents don't want to go through with it because because they believe that if somebody gets surgery, that surgery is just for animals and pets and that this that their son will lose his soul essentially and it's it's a it's not that the idea is bad i actually really love the idea and I, and I actually thought about what i would do in that position for several days it's just the acting and the writing isn't that good there are characters that flip-flop sides throughout the entire episode it's just weird like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense like that's what really brought it down for me but i think tko would end up being the worst for me because it's just I just wasn't interested. I was just like, really? I mean, I love martial arts movies, but that's not why I was watching Babylon 5. Um, it just made no sense whatsoever. Um, so Babylon 5, have you watched it? What do you think of it? Comment up below about the first season. No talking about the second season or seasons beyond. Uh, I want to leave a spoiler free, especially for me, because I haven't finished the second season. And this is my first watch through of the, of the show. So I don't want to know anything. Um, I'm enjoying the show so far. From what I understand, if you're wanting to watch it digitally and not wanting to pay for it, I think the show is, is either about to or has already arrived on HBO Max, but right now that's the only way to watch it unless you buy it on iTunes or Amazon. However, I would encourage you to potentially maybe buy the first couple of episodes digitally and see if how you like the show. And if you want to continue on, maybe buy the the rest of the show physically because I plan on buying it physically because I prefer physical media and I'm hoping to make a vlog about that someday as to why I prefer physical media but however you watch it let me know what you think thanks always for watching bye